one thing. When did all this happen? Okay. Okay. I am sitting in this room. These two haven't even talked. She's sitting here, this lawyer is there. So it's like, have, is there a worked out a deal or what? I mean, you know, kind of. So I said, how much? Now, I had asked for $8,000. The amount for the lost material. Whatever was lost on the computer. So he said $5,000. They're very excited. So I thought, hey, I was going to get nothing. $5,000 i am getting. Fine, let's take it. I said, OK, fine. So she announced that we are settling out of court. So they made me sign some documents. I signed it. That fellow waved to me, that boy. I also waved him. And then I went to the, took the elevator and went to the car. And you will not believe it. I got down. The next elevator, this boy is already free. So he comes up. <laughs> I waited. I said, I don't want to go to my car. I don't want him to follow me and find out which car I'm driving. He might follow me until my home. So I kept quiet. But then see the strange thing. They, they wrote that they would pay this money, right? And then I never heard from them. For about five, six months, nothing happened. Then we get a mysterious check for uh, $50. Okay. And my accountant had a very tough time finding out who sent that money. Finally, we found out it has come from the court system. Somebody from some lawyer, office in the court, government court office has sent it. So we called her. Have you sent this check? She said yes. So I said that uh, what was this regarding? Because well, nothing is written, just the company's name and the amount. So she said uh, that I don't know, but I just know the check number and the amount because I have only that record. I said, okay, how do I find out what this is for? She said, you have to call someone. She gave me that number. Just like India, bureaucracy, government are the same anywhere in the world. So I didn't take care, she gave another number. I called her another number. That person said, yeah, this is for that, uh, you had that court case, no? So this is for that. I said, but he settled for 5,000. So in 50, some two zeros are missing here. So she said, let me see again. She, looked. she said, uh, I don't know what you settled for. She said, I can only tell you that we sent this money for that case. So I said, you don't even have, she said, no, my window only allows me to see $50 sent towards this case. So <laughs> what a case, one more number. So you call that person, this went on like this. I sought that mystery enough to figure out it was for this same problem. First. <laughs> then I said, uh, one lady asked me, she said, why are you asking me all these questions? So I said, because I am wondering why only 50 was paid when it settled for 5,000. Are you asking me, uh, you know, are you trying to take my advice? I said, no. It's a simple query. She said, I am not here to answer those kinds of queries. This is not my job. I don't ask for such questions. Okay. She said, uh, if you have any questions, you have to file a case again. I said, why would I have to file a case again? Well, because the case is resolved. She said, see the record. It's saying here we have settled out of court. So, she said, that means it is not in the court system anymore. We have no jurisdiction or no right to collect them. I cannot help you collect them. If you want to collect the money, you have to file another case for collection, and then it will go through the whole system. Another six months later, somebody will call you, and then you can come here to collect. And then we'll have to get that man in again. So I realized what a mess. What they have done here. That lawyer and this lawyer have talked and they knew if I agree to out of court, there is no way I can collect. Yeah. Yeah. So they settled it between themselves beautifully. <laughs> and I thought I'm doing a great job in a head talk, but actually I was fooled. Which I didn't know the system. And there is no way of knowing and this is real life. This can fully easily happen. Such problems where the other person is so smart where they completely fooled you. Because she came so innocently and told me I am your lawyer and all that, I really believe she was interested in my well-being, which is not the case. So, lawyers, attorney, banker, they work for themselves. They don't work for you. You have to know how to make that work. 
lithium ion is slightly better what you are seeing so there are more little more people on it especially the lawyers and others they take little more interest in it not in the rest of it they don't care about you they are looking at their things yeah. <laughs> and that's harsh here if you learn it over the course of time I, I hope you don't have to go through all that now the other thing was the need for being objective not to be biased on on situation to give you an example a few years back there was this uh, vibrant gujarat every two years they had yeah in 2007 when they had it uh, person i know asked me to meet a history professor in Bombay, Bombay University to ask her if she would write a book for that Bible, which would be released by Narendra Modi at the inauguration. So I went to meet her, the known history professor. So this lady was very clear. She said, I don't want to be tied as a Narendra Modi camp person. Industry, everything will hurt me if I if I don't want to write this. So I said, do you have anything against him, or is it because it will be tight? What is your problem? She said, no, I I don't want to be associated with anything with the problem because I have to survive as a history professor. I don't want to fall in one camp or the other camp. So I said, he doesn't have anything. This is too small a thing for him to be bothered about at his level. You have to understand that this is just one of those things in a series of things that will happen. You know, and they thought you are good, so they asked me to talk to you. If you are not interested, I'll come. So she was not. So see, what she had was a bias that she was bringing in. She had lost her objectivity. What ended up was that I ended up writing that, and it got released with a lot of fanfare. Okay, Shambhavi. Marmanu Villa and Ratan Tata were on the dais. They were all three on the dais at the same time. I think that is probably the only event in the country where they all three come on the same day at the same time. And the book was released at that time. That we were, each of them gave a problem. So what I'm trying to find, and I ended up writing a book in a subject I knew nothing. Ports. I didn't know the ports of Gujarat. I knew something about ports, but not Gujarat ports. Simply because I was not going to, this didn't even strike me that I'm going to fall in X or Y camp. And what I learned in the process is that quite often, see, in India, people say the IAS people are bureaucrats and they are not this thing. I was very pleasantly surprised. The development commissioner in Gujarat, he worked with me from 4 a.m. in the morning. Bring the book out in time. We believe he actually came to the office I was working in at four o'clock in the morning and sat there. He was a better writer than me. He was early criti criticism itself came through. And I asked him. I told him, "You are a much better writer than me. Why don't you write?" He said, "I don't can't write. I don't have the time. So I tell you what I think should be changed." But his interest and his thing was so high that he was prepared. I don't know even in USA whether any government bureaucrat will ever come and work off office hours like that. No. So what it does is by not being biased, I learned a lot. I saw that there is no just being objective and saying, let me see what, let me not judge it. Even though this lady was. Very reputed, and when she said it, I thought part of me felt she is saying she knows the system. Maybe she knows she is right. How complicated things are. Then the other part, when they told me, why don't you write it? Because we don't have time. This has to be done in record time. So in two months we had to write it. It's fit. Wrote it. But release within that time. But that need for objectivity came. When I look at that example, what gets me is where she lost out. Was that no? Because she was holding a bias, so we have to be careful when you are doing business. Another thing is intuition. How many of you 
have anything like intuition. You believe in it or do it. Huh? Do you have any examples? Like uh, one intuition which I had was, uh, is, this is a for example, when I was in the felt sand or something, coming from a native place by train, uh, my dad, he had a heat stroke. I was not that conversant at what exactly is a heat stroke in, while traveling. Uh, and people used to say that uh, get him off the train, get him admitted to a hospital. Uh, one intuition which I had was, why not, uh, it would be just uh, 12 hours more, I just reach Bombay and then I get in the mm -hmm. But something somewhere struck me. I said, no, I, I, I'll take the call and I'll get get off board and take him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And it worked wonders for me. So, okay, so it really helped. Yeah, so there was an intuition. In, I said, no, why not go? Because I myself was not confident whether I'll be able to manage the whole scene, take him off the right. right. your place, you don't know the place. Yeah, I, I never got up to that at that place at that point of time. But Intuitively, I just took a call and got down, got him admitted. Mm -hmm. in, say 48 hours, if he was back to his senses, where he should have went off. So it was a, I think, a good thing to follow my intuition. Like why not right. just right. do it? Irrespective of whether you mm -hmm. know whether you'll be able to pull it off or not. Right, right. How about your any others? Doesn't come to mind. Huh? Doesn't come to mind. Doesn't come to mind. How about you? So all of you have seen that. No? That is the one of the most critical things for success. Knowing your gut and giving it the weightage it needs. So what happens depending on the background is sometimes technical backgrounds sometimes affect some people. They are so they become very rational. Science and technical background. They become very rational and they start blocking this intuitive faculty. It's very important to let it also be. The more you use it, the more it works. One thing about it. The more you recognize it and give it a chance, it works. The less you, uh, you know, come in the way of it. So remember, I have used it in major Always had to explain to people later on why I did that. Because it's a very timely thing that comes to you. I'll give you one example. We had a situation where I went for a business meeting in Hyderabad with another colleague. And uh, in the middle of the meeting, my colleague realized that I was poor. That I wanted we ended the meeting fast. And when he came out, he asked me what happened. I said, no, this person has a lot of financial stress. So we should leave him now. We should come back six months later and talk to him. He said, how did you know that? I said, I don't know. He said, I said, I have no clue, but I was very uncomfortable sitting there because I knew that he has, I know he has financial problems and serious financial really, this is not the right time to me. So he said, I can't believe this. Anyway, he left me. You know, all of us, he left me. Then one month later, he met this man. Both were on a flight to home. And they both were talking. And the first thing that person told him that day when the two of you had come, do you remember uh, when you came, uh, you met and all that? He said, yeah. He said, then that day, I had the biggest uh, financial crisis, my funding stopped, and everything he went on. And his friend said, my God, I can't believe it. That's exactly what Shekhar told me. And then when we met, I met them actually. They approached me, I cannot do that. And it was funny, because I didn't have an absolute I don't know why I told him that. But this is not once. This has happened so many times. I firmly believe that many people are actually using it whether they acknowledge it or no. They, oh. It's like intellectually they will tell you the reason later. And that intellectual thing, what came before that intellectual? That was it. Yes. So how do you explain it then? So the reason is... No, it is when you are more open, when you are more 
open, you can get the energy from the other person. The invisible energy is around. You can actually tap into that. And that comes only if you're open. And the same person may not be open all the time. So it's not like a thing that X is always going to be open. No. But on a given day or at a given time, almost everybody will have some level of openness that will allow them to absorb that. You kind of know, no? Sometimes you will go to a place and you don't feel comfortable. Is it that you wash that person and then you make out something like that? No, actually it hits you whether you are watching or not. It is a bit of you are saying his body language or... Yeah. Maybe he is comfortable and... Uh, Correct. It could be the body language. Or maybe some kind of energy. Yeah, it's just some, it has never been explained properly because it is not something that you can explain. Yeah, many times intuition does not have a rationality. Yeah, it is. It is quite irrational. That's why I'm asking you. It's a highly rational man. How do you say it? Yeah. It's possibly seen one way or another. Maybe so many times like that. Just think that. Once in a case where we had a business partner, we had a very serious discussion we were going to have with the board of India. Board had uh, mostly American from the board. They had asked us to have a separate meeting to discuss something, all the owners and the founders. And uh, one of the founders whom we had called for the meeting, very brilliant chap, very, very smart chap. All the rest of us had decided what to tell him. I was going to be the lead spokesman telling him all this. I had made a big list like this, you know, bigger than this, a long list of things to tell him of what all everybody had and what everybody felt. And we had rehearsed the whole thing. It's pretty good. And we went there, I mean, we were meeting at my place, but we were told to meet in an off location. They call it off-site meetings in US, where you can say anything you want to the other person, and nobody will hold it against each other. If you cannot go to court, if you call it an off-site, you can tell them the worst possible thing, and you forget it. They call it just a venting out thing session. Everybody says whatever they want. I don't like this, I don't like this, or whatever they want, they as well and just forgot. So that, that kind of a meeting we were having at my place. And the plan was that I tell them all this. When I opened the door, I even told everybody how to sit in the house, you know, who would sit where. Everything I had planned out. And, but when this guy came in the door, I uh, changed the plan. And there was no time to tell anybody. I also didn't know I was going to change. Just when I saw him, I changed the plan. So all I told him is that uh, I can't, you know, I'm going to quit. So he said, why? I said, because I don't want to work with you. Just either you quit or I quit. And there are no, it's a personal reason. There are no reasons. He didn't know what to say because I'm not giving a reason. I have every right to quit any time. Being a partner, I have every right to say I'm going away. No? So I don't want to be paid. I don't want to be a part of this. I want to move. So it baffled because he was not ready for that. No, some of the other partners were not ready for me. So they were, you know, it was disruptive behavior. It really upset them. Because some of them, because it was a, a new strategy, right? and this was not the plan. And why did I do that? I did that because I started going mentally. When I saw him, I knew he had come from a lawyer, even though it was 8:15 in the morning. I knew he has come straight from a lawyer, and I knew that he has been told that even though it is an offset, there are certain things they cannot take. And if they do that, take them. And all this flashed onto me when, he, when I saw him. So I said, if I tell him this, he cannot challenge me. Because the track record was very good of the company. So if you go to a court of law, everything that I wrote would become subjective. The records were good because these events will show in the next court. All the things that have gone wrong are not going to show till the next quarter. We know because we are seeing, right? So anybody who is 
judging is going to go on the past, and that past is still looking okay. You can't prove this, no, till it happened. So I said, you have really going to be stuck, and I will take the blame, because I am the guy who, you know, the more exposed person. So this chap can sue me for a person, and I'll be in deep trouble. These guys are all fine, they're all supporting. So best is to tell him what my problem is, and that I'm quitting. And let him, so he asked me, he said, oh, do you want me also? Do you, are you telling me to quit? Or are you telling me to get out from my post? And stay with me. I said, no, I want you in the company. Because there's nobody as good as you. He was the best in the team. So I said, you are the best in the team, no question. But you are not right for the role you have. So if you're going to continue in that role, I have to. But I do want you, because you are, you are far better than anybody in this room. I was very clear. So, but the role is not right. And that's why I would rather quit in telling you this chapter. So he understood that the animal, there is no real solid animosity. He is going straight by what is good for the company. It's not a personal problem that he has. No. He thinks stay with the company. He is also a very intelligent man. Right away he knew the differences are not personal at all. He is just trying to protect the company. Sikhar is doing what he can. But he is not looking for a legal lawsuit. He's looking more at how to be this thing. But if you want to run it that way, you want to do it, do it fine. I don't want to be a part of it. So then he asked other people and everybody had to stumble along because they were not ready for this, this mode of thing. And they did a decent job. Most of them knew what they wanted to say. So they said what they had to say. And they were saying, hey, you can. And later on, one of them asked, got very upset with me. So he said, how could you change this? I was not ready. Hey, what is this? It's crazy. We spent four hours yesterday doing all this. <laughs> and you just throw it out. I said, no, see, once he's bringing this, I said, you can ask. He told us later on, he stayed with the company, then some years later we made him the CEO, all of them. So, beautiful it was. But he himself told us, I went to the lawyer that day. And I was waiting for one wrong step from you all, I would take you to the cleaners. The word they use, take you to the cleaners. He said, I was just waiting for one misstep, and I was ready to do it. Because I knew that the numbers are good, the finances are good, everything is good. I was just lucky. <laughs> it was this intuition that should save you a lot. Right? Or this belief in a higher form. Or whatever. Something comes to your rescue. But you have to be open. You are not open to it. And they don't teach you this. Right? Huh? Yes. They are busy teaching you how to do a better spreadsheet and those graphs are to do better. <laughs> but these are the things that are important. These are the things that will save you. That's why they call continuity. Do oh, you all have any other things to say? Hmm? I think uh, most of the things are covered. The other things you have to look at is, uh, if suppose you've got a customer who cannot pay the bank draft, how do you deal with it? And you've got a lot of money stuck up. How do you approach that? How do you work around? Those are the things that require the maximum people's skills. And it takes a lot to get something. Sometimes you might not get the money at all. So you have to get what you can get of value from. You might have some equipment, you might have some things that you might need. You have to figure that out. Because you may not get could end up being a bartering game. Okay, let me take some. Because they can't pay you. What will you do? Yeah. Because you can't go to court. He doesn't have the money. So what does he have? And this is what happened in Silicon Valley. In the meltdown, 2006. It didn't happen so much this time. But it happened in 2001. Everybody was going back. Every other company was going back. So we had to find a we didn't want to declare bankruptcy, so we decided to pay the people. 
do we will not get paid. That one day that was very foolish. But it had to be done because few of us were traveling a lot that time. And if you declare bankruptcy, you have to physically, it's not a bad thing by the way, in the Western world, unlike India. Yeah. It's not considered a stigma. See, that's another major thing. In India, failure is a stigma. There, it is not reflecting on you. No, it, it's a combination of reasons that they survived. And then we came out.